So the topic today is true and false fasting. The first question I have for everyone today is why did Jesus fast? Why did Jesus fast? It was because the Holy Spirit prompted Jesus to fast and led him up into the wilderness to be tempted. That's why. The Spirit prompted him. The Spirit moved on him to fast and to go up into the wilderness to be tempted. In Matthew 4 and a 1 to 11 will explain that. It says in, in 1, it said, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. If Jesus prepared himself to be tempted by fasting and praying, I would say it's probably a good idea that we do the same. Amen. Prepare yourself for all of the things that are going to happen to you and that are happening to you. Prepare yourself by fasting and praying. Fasting is a spiritual tool that we can and should use to strengthen our relationship with God. In the King James Version, after the transfiguration, Jesus came down from the mountain with Peter, James, and John. The other disciples, however, were trying to cast out a demon from a little, ch a little child. And this child had this, this demon for a long time. Caused him not able to speak and not able to even hear. And it caused it, it would throw him into fire and into water and he would convulse and he would just, you know, almost try to kill himself if it wasn't for the parents stopping him. And so when they came down from the mountain, they were talking all about, you know, the different things that had just happened. Jesus told them, don't tell nobody. Jesus is always telling people, don't tell nobody. <laughs> Amen. Have you ever told somebody not to tell nobody? And what happened? They told somebody. Well, see, the reason why Jesus said don't tell nobody, because he knew they're going to tell everybody. <laughs> if he would have said tell everybody, they might not have told anybody. Amen. So when he came down and he was talking to them, they ran into the rest of the disciples and they asked, what is all the fussing about? And uh, they said, we trying to uh, 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 cast a demon. The, the father said, they, I, I came to you. You wasn't around. So I went to your disciple and I said, can you cast this demon out? And they tried and they couldn't. And so after Jesus had cast this demon out. Jesus said unto them, because they asked him why later on. They're not at that time, but later on they asked him, why couldn't we cast them out? I was just thinking maybe Peter, James, and John because we wasn't there, see. Uh, the favorites wasn't there, you know. But no, no, Jesus had a message to give out. And so Jesus said unto them, because your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye had the faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say to that mountain, remove hence to yonder place. And it shall happen. And nothing will be impossible for you. This is what Jesus said. Okay. Now, you remember we were talking about that before. Like in Luke uh, 17, 5 to 6, uh, uh, something happened. And the disciples uh, asked Jesus to increase their faith. And he said the same thing. If you had just a grain of this mustard seed, you can say to the mountain. Now, I've come to realize that we don't have a grain. That saddens me because I've been saying at least a grain. At least we got a grain. But then when I kept reading it, Jesus kept saying, if. If mean you don't right now, but if you did have just a grain of the seed, you could say to a mountain, I thank God some of you don't have a grain. Because no telling what you be telling to remove yourself and be go to yonder hence 
some of us be we telling our kids in the name of Jesus remove thyself go up yonder <laughs> you know friends that used to be best friends husbands that used to be husband but now ex thank God some of us don't have a grain pastor take it too long preaching remove thyself and go on up yonder right now. And all of a sudden, I'd just be gone. Because nothing, Jesus said, would be impossible. Thank God. Some of us don't even have a grain. But we can work on getting a grain. Because in 21, he said, How be it this kind goes not out but by praying and fasting. Praying and and fasting. So then your faith increases with fasting and praying. Come on, y'all. Your faith will increase if you fast and pray. Biblical fasting always involves giving up food and sometimes water, but only for a time. And these are things that our body needs. Some of us give, uh, may give up candy or Facebook or even the YouTube or TV or drinking or smoking or parties, dating, etc. <laughs> and although it may be a good thing to give up some of these, however, these are not things that are needed. There are things that we want. So fasting is truly a giving up something that you need. Amen. Now, you, you can forfeit these other things and give them up, but that doesn't mean that they were needed. So you cannot say, I'm going to fast just TV when you are going to be eaten. OK, go ahead and add the food part to it, because that's where what is needed. TV isn't needed. You know, even though many of us are watching more TV and not doing the studying. We all now know that there is importance with baptism. However, fasting is mentioned more than baptism in the Bible. We also know how important sacrifice and offerings are to God. But in the Old Testament, open field sacrifices were no longer allowed. The Jewish people could only give sacrifice at an appointed place uh, that God would choose. So, when many of them couldn't get to the temple in Jerusalem, they would just fast and pray. And this would be accepted by God. Now, before the, the, the temple in Jerusalem was built, they had the tabernacle. And God said, no more open fields. Y'all have to come here. Amen. Amen. So it's almost like no more open churches. Y'all have to come to church. Can't be having these open field home churches where you and your family just having church. You need to come to church. Gather with the people, the Bible said, and let us exalt his name together. There's something about being together, y'all. Amen. Now, if you have to, like they could not get to the temple, then if you have to have service at your home, then you have service at your home. Amen. So fasting is also like offering a sacrifice unto God if they couldn't get to the temple. So they did fasting and praying, and that was like a sacrifice. In Matthew 9, 14 to 15, we read of a conversation Jesus had regarding fasting. 
It says in 14, then John's disciples, everybody know who John's disciples were? That John the Baptist, he had his own disciples. They all followed him. A lot of Pharisees and Sadducees followed John. Amen. But John was in jail. And when John's disciples came to him saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, can the wedding guests be sad while the groom is with them? The time will come when the groom will be taken away from them and then they will fast. It's something else when we fast. Some of you, when we say the fast is coming, you sadden. Oh, we ain't going to be at ease. Oh, you get all sad. Jesus knows that people get sad when you fast. He said it right here. He said, can the wedding guests be sad while the groom is here? Shall we put them through? Shall we not let them eat at a wedding? Oh, he said, when I'm gone, then you fast. If Jesus was here with us today, there would be no need for us to fast because Every weakness, every stronghold, every struggle, every need, every situation, every uh, uh, everything that is possible to go through. We would ask God, we would say, Jesus, help me. And Jesus would say, do you believe I can help you? And we would say, yes, my Lord. And God will heal our body. God will give us food to eat. God will give us, tell us what job we should take. Amen. God will help us in our hair loss. Because he said every string on your head is counted. Amen. He will help you in every situation. If he was here, be no need to fast. Because he's not here though. We have to fast on these things. Lord, what job should I take? Fast and pray. Lord, should I actually get this operation? Fast and pray. Lord, am I going to make it through this operation? God, fast and pray. And I will answer you. Fasting causes our dependence on God to come to a forefront in our mind. We focus more on how to serve him when we're fasting. And so we should have intentions. We should have a reason why we're fasting, y'all. What is your purpose? What is your intention? As you are fasting, some of us have headaches. Some of us, our stomach starts to growl. You know you're hungry and you have, you, there's a need for food. I would have to say, when this happens, you, or it should remind you of what you're doing. It should be a continual reminder of your situation or your spiritual purpose for fasting. It should. I'm hungry. Ooh, my stomach's growling. Yeah, I'm fasting. And I'm fasting because I need God to direct me. I'm fasting because my son has an issue. I'm fasting because my daughter is, I'm fasting because, you know, there's a reason. Oh, there's many reasons to fast. Amen. Fast when your kids go go off to school. Fast. Fast when they get ready to come back with a man. Fast. Fast. Amen. When you need God to assist you. So 
Now I have just a few possible purposes for fasting. First, I say, first and foremost important is to seek God's guidance. That's why we fast. To know him. That's why we fast. And to become more like him. That's why I fast. So that we might be able to minister to the needs of others. That's why we fast. All right. I'm going to repeat that because it's the first and most important. To seek God's guidance. To know him. And to become more like him. So. We might be able to minister to the needs of others. Here's number two. To express grief. When a person is sad, it's time to fast. When it's depressed, it's time to fast. Have you noticed that a lot of people, when they're in grief, they can't eat? Your body already telling you, you need to fast. And get some di- direction, get some some understanding, get to know God. And maybe then you will be uh, delivered from this grief. Third, to seek his protection. Amen. You ever feel that things could go wrong. So I need you to fast. Because it could go wrong. I need protection from God. Can you fast with me? Fourth, to express uh, repentance. I need to fast because I've been doing wrong. I repent. I want to fast for to express to God my repentance. Fifth, to humble ourselves before God. Fasting is about humbling yourself, not uh, uh, focusing on what you want and need. It's on focusing on getting to know God, getting closer and closer to him. Number six, to minister to the needs of others. Very important, y'all. Very important. I'll get to that later. That it's, it's important that you learn how to minister. So you need a heart like God. So you need to fast and pray. These things come by fasting and praying. Amen. Only because we don't even have a grain. What we do have It's going to get us into heaven, though. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. I'm going to make it. I might not have a grain. I don't even know how much I got. If it's not even a grain of a mustard seed, whatever we got is enough to get us into heaven. Amen. That's good. God is good. He made a way. I would say seventh is To overcome temptation, we need to fast. Uh, Eight, to express your love towards him, towards God, we need to fast. Now, I'm going to take you to something. I'm going to take you to Isaiah 58 and 1. Because we're talking here about true fasting. That was all that we explained in the beginning. And now we're going to talk a little bit about false fasting. Okay, in Isaiah 58 and one, it said the people were not fasting correctly. So God told Isaiah to cry out loud and do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and declare to my people their transgression and to the house of Jacob their sin. To it said, yet they seek and require me daily and delight externally in a sense for people to see possibly. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. To know my ways as if they were in reality. A nation that did righteousness forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgment. They delight to draw near to God in a visible way. Their purpose, their intentions were not right. False fasting. Three, it says, why? These are the people. Why have we fasted, they say, and you do not see it? Why have we afflicted ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Do you know that's what fasting is? Fasting is not having something, afflicting yourself. Amen. Causing yourself to to suffer, sacrifice, giving up. 
something that you need and it hurts to do it. It says here, behold, O Israel, on the day of your fast, when you should be grieving for your sins, you find profit in your business. These people, when they fast and instead of, you know, going down and bowing and, and grieving for their sins and repenting, they're they're out working. And, and they're making the other people work. Amen. And instead of stopping all work, as the law implies, you and your workmen should do, you extort from your hirers, servants, and you make them work a full labor. Uh, that, that's a whole day when we all supposed to be fasting. Four says, the facts are that you only fast for strife and debate and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Not that they're actually fighting, but with the fist of wickedness, you're doing wrong. Fasting as you do today will not cause your voice to be heard on high by God. It, the, the way you're fasting, I'm not going to hear that. Uh, uh, that's why you're fasting and I don't hear you. False fasting. Five, it says, it's with such a fast as yours, what I have chosen today for a man to humble himself with sorrow of his soul. This is God trying to tell him how the true fast is. He's asking him, it's fasting merely a, a, uh, uh, a mechanical thing. When I was uh, in uh, um, college at Trade Tech, we were in a dance class. It's called dance production where you make up dances to perform. And... The teacher would say, I want you to be the lead. I want you to be the lead. I want you to be the lead all the time. And I didn't like it because other people get mad at me. Why he have to be the lead? Well, I was into acting at that time always, too. And so you just don't dance. I mean, these people could dance way better than me. They can kick higher. They can jump, split, do all that way better. But what they didn't do is they didn't have that stage performance they didn't have that they wasn't able to uh, gra gather the attention of the people and so uh, they were dancing like mechanical it was just you know and you were like uh, what there's no feeling there you know and so this is the same thing you can fast in a mechanical way because we're going on a fast and so you just fast just because we're fasting and and you just go through whatever what are we eating okay you eat it no praying really nowhere and even if you prayed it's just okay god bless you so okay thank you jesus uh, yeah we're fasting again i'm doing this for you lord you know so uh answer me you know, but true fasting in six, it says rather is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of the wicked, to stop you from being wicked, to undo the bands of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and that you break every enslaving yoke. Seven, it says, is it not to divide your bread with the hungry? And bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked that you cover him and that you hide not yourself from the needs of your own flesh. That's your kin. Now, I have to really give God praise and thanksgiving. That's why I love him so, because I know I ain't doing all this. When I fast, I got plenty of food, but I ain't running out there to the homeless and giving it to them. This is what it's saying. Is not this the reason? Isn't this the fast that I've given you that when you uh, have leftovers that you help somebody? When there are homeless that you bring them in your house? That when you have uh, family members that don't that have issues and don't have a place that you help them? Woo! I don't know what time it was or what it was like back then. But I don't know if the homeless that we got today 
They will let them in. So I have to give God praise. And so I tell to you, you, you know, strengthen me, O oh Lord, as I fast. Give me your heart and give me guidance. Because you cannot just let any homeless in your house or any church member. Oh, Lord. Ooh. You can't do it. You just can't do it. You come home. I remember telling the judge one time, he's like, well, this person doing this and this and that. And I said, your honor, if you let the, if you take this man and you put him in jail for 16 years. I said, you know, and I know that when they come out, there's nothing they're going to be able to do but wrong and end up being right back. There's, there's no rehabilitation. You are not helping them. I said, can you, can you just help me? He said, listen, I know you here and you're a minister and all that. And you got all your church folks up in here. And I know y'all some good peoples. But this guy, <laughs> he needs to go to jail. Because he lie and he steal. And Christian don't lie and steal. Woo, did he not know? I told him I beg the difference from uh, your honor, but Christians steal. Christians will lie. Christians are just as human as you. Whew. When I was a child, I did things. And when I'm talking about spiritually, when I was a child, I still did some things. When I became an adult, then I put away some of those childish things. But you hear me when I put away some of those childish things. I put away some of those childish things. Some of those. Everybody, can we say some of those? Some of those. Because I know some of you got some of those things still going on in your life. Some of those childish things. Well, you don't want to talk to that person anymore. And the Bible says that you ought to uh, uh, forgive them. And, and some of those things are still going on. You ain't forgiving them because you don't want to forgive them. You don't want nothing to do with them. They, you asked them to lose your number. Amen. And you told them and you blocked them just in case they didn't. Yeah, some of those things are still going on in our lives. Amen. And so I thank God for his mercy and his grace towards me because of some of those things. Amen. So God is saying, is this not the fast that I have appointed to do all these things to, to help you uh, help others? And yet you are not doing this. But he said, if you take on this fast, then shall the light break forth like the morning. And your healing will take place. Your restoration and the power of a new life shall spring forth speedily. Amen. Your righteousness, your rightness, uh, your justice, and your right relationships with God shall go before you, conducting you to peace and prosperity. And the glory of the Lord shall be with you. Amen. I can read all the way down to at least 11. Then shall you call on the Lord and he will answer. This is fasting and praying, true fasting. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. Can you believe that? I mean, you shall cry out to the Lord and God will say, here I am. Ooh, I feel the spirit. I told you I might not be jumping around when I feel the spirit, but I, ow, I feel the spirit. I might not jerk when I feel it, but I feel it. Amen. He will answer. Here I am. If you take away from your misyoke or oppression, wherever you find them, the finger pointed and scorned toward the oppressed of the godless and every form of false, harsh, unjust and wickedness speaking. God will eventually take it all away. And if you pour out that which you sustain your own life for the hungry. I mean, isn't it interesting that when it's fasting, God's talking about other people in your life? What God is really trying to give to us is a heart like him. He said that I've given my pastors a heart like mine. 
Sometimes it gets us in trouble because we care. And uh, uh, we might not do something that we should do. We might not say something that we should. We still need those instructions from God. We still need to fast and pray. We have to cry out loud. And we have to spare not. We cannot look at their faces. We have to speak the truth. We have to tell them about their transgression. We have to warn them for the sake of receiving rewards in heaven. And so many of us find it difficult sometimes to tell you like it is. I try to give the truth. And when I give the truth, some people can't handle it and they walk out on me. And then God has to remind me as I fast and pray. I did not call you to gather a bunch of people together and keep them in your temple. But to preach the gospel. And God has called you to preach the gospel. Tell as many people as you can. Those of you who are dwelling in homes, go to your neighbor. Invite them over. Preach the gospel. Those of you who are still dwelling in apartments, well, that's good. You come out to your apartment, there they are. Preach the gospel. If you don't know what to say, then put something on that says it. Hey, Amen. Just put a shirt on and say, Jesus is Lord. And on the back it said, the Lord loves you. And you don't have to say nothing. You just come out and go. <laughs> Amen. And you just preach the gospel. That's all you got to do. Thank you for listening to this short excerpt. If you would like to view the full service, please go to our YouTube channel, Grace Cove One, find the full list of videos, and search for the video titled Full Service and Sermon. We also welcome you to join us at Grace Covenant at 285 Clay Avenue. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, God is over all.